What up? You know what's going on. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing some BRZ stuff. We're gonna get this car running and driving, hopefully by the end of this video, because that is the goal. The car goes to Subaru on Monday to get the valve spring recall done on it before we turbocharge it, because I don't wanna lose a valve somewhere in that engine. And uh, well, since they're doing it for free, since it's a recall, thank you, Subaru. But today, we're putting in the transmission, the new clutch, the new flywheel, all the new stuff. So let me go over kind of what we got set on the ground. So that way you guys kind of have an idea of what we're doing and all the parts that I replaced. Um, I'm also gonna suggest a few things that if you're doing this, replace these parts. Well, blam, look at that pile of good stuff. So I took some time, I cleaned out the inside of the transmission with just some degreaser, uh, just to get all of the old schmoo out of there. So all that is clean. I also cleaned the shifter assembly holder with our new shifter bushing on the back side of it. So this is the retainer bearing that I highly suggest you guys swap out if you're doing this. This is where the throw out bearing sits, moves back and forth and does its actuating. We got a new rear main seal because mine was leaking a little bit. New ARP flywheel bolts. New competition clutch, lightweight flywheel, competition clutch, stage three clutch, good for like 350 foot pounds of torque, I believe. Uh, new billet clutch fork for the transmission and a forged shift fork, shift fork, shift, shift fork. That is called a shift fork, forged shift fork. So before we even get to throwing any of this stuff on the car, I need to get some of this stuff replaced on the transmission itself. So we need to get the clutch fork thrown up in here. We need to get this retainer swapped out, new one greased up, replace the seal behind it. It, get that ball off of there, that uh, that old pivot ball, and get on that new one. And then once that's done, we can get the flywheel bolted up to the car after we change the rear main seal. It's not too bad to do. So let me get disassembling this. I need to pull off this old rear retainer cover. Then we'll get the old pivot ball out of here. And then once that pivot ball is out of here, we can get the new throw out bearing on there. And we can get this whole situation kind of cleaned up a little bit before we get the uh, clutch thrown in the car. So this shouldn't be too bad. So let me get going. I, I think these are just like 10 millimeter bolts going around here. Just gotta pull those off, put the new one on, seal it back up, bada bing, bada boom, new retainer on there. Shift, pivot, ball, round dealio thingy, that guy. We're just gonna, it just unscrews off. Just unscrewed off, screw on the new one. Uh, we are gonna have to grease this up. So I'm gonna throw some lube on this new guy here, some lube up on this guy here, and then I'm gonna get that clutch fork put in here with the new throw up bearing. So that way the transmission is ready to go back in the car. So inside the trans, everything is good to go. The new clutch, or I, not new clutch, the new retainer is on back there. We have our new throw out bearing and our new clutch fork. Everything is very smooth, if you see there. I went ahead, I threw a little bit of lube onto the input shaft as well, just because uh, that'll make life a lot easier for us. We got the dust boot thrown back on for the top of the shift fork. So transmission wise, this thing is good to go. Now, if you're doing that rear retainer, kind of like I did, I do suggest that you put a new seal on there. I just use some of this sealant that I had laying around the garage. That works uh, just fine. It's just like this Permatex right stuff, works awesome, creates a seal, heat sensitive, you know, all that good stuff. And then here is our old retainer shaft that kind of came off the car. As you can see there, it's like, a, it's lived a good life. It's lived a good life. New one is now on the car. So I'm gonna hop under the turd. I'm gonna get the new rear main seal on. If you don't know how to change a rear main seal, it's pretty easy. You just pop out the old one with like a pick, then you pound the new one on, super simple. Once I get the new rear main seal on, Melanie is going to help. She is gonna help me hold the crank on the engine so that way I can get the new flywheel on. Once the new flywheel's on, we can get the actual friction disc and the pressure plate bolted up to the engine, get the transmission on, reverse process, get everything else on, hopefully be done with this in the next couple hours, because it's hot. It's hot. So rear main seal has been replaced, done. The crank sensor pulley flywheel looking thing that's not actually a flywheel, it's just a metal plate with teeth. That's back on. Now I'm going to go through, I'm gonna hand tighten the, ah, I'm gonna hand tighten the new flywheel onto the crank. And then once it's hand tightened on there, I'll grab Melanie, we'll come out, we'll tighten it all down. This is, uh, you know, taking it all out was a lot more fun than putting it all back in. I feel really naked without my hat, but there's no way my hat fits down there. So uh, let me show you guys the flywheel that I decided to go with. It is competition. Now when you're doing this, make sure that you keep your greasy little fingers 
off of the surface of the flywheel, it is a good idea to have like a can of brake clean, some safety glasses while you're under there, spray it down, take a rag and wipe down the flywheel. So that way you're not getting like little grimy fingerprints all over it because that can wear your clutch faster because the friction material and the flywheel, they just, they won't get along. So let me show you guys this flywheel. I'll swing down there, I'll get it hand tightened in. I also have those new flywheel bolts, which are all ARP. Once I have them hand tightened down, we'll grab Melanie, we'll torque them down and then we can get everything else reassembled. Moving along. Well, bam, there's our flywheel in this like nice little bubble wrap. Ugh, this is a slight like, ultra lightweight flywheel, I guess is what they called it. It's a street flywheel essentially. And then this is the new hardware that we're gonna be using. So this fastener lube actually goes around the head of the bolts and not actually on them. Now I have a little bit of blue blue Loctite, I think is the not super Loctite-y Loctite. Oh, ARP Ultra Torque, ooh. Ooh, so I'm gonna throw just a dab of tiny little blue Loctite on these so that way these bolts do not back out on us because that's the last thing that we want to happen. So let's uh, let's get this guy bolted up. We'll get those guys thrown on. Super easy to bolt these in. These are 12 points so that way they don't strip out either. So they're very nice hardware. Highly suggest swapping over to those if you're doing something similar to this. We'll get this guy bolted up, grab Melanie, torque it down, we'll keep going. I have to put a pilot bearing in that shit. Hang on. Straight. All right, so if you are gonna do this, grab a socket that is the same size as the outer diameter of the pilot bearing, stick it on there. Make sure this is straight when you're putting this in. If this is not straight, your flywheel will be like all sorts of, it will not, it, just don't do it. Just make sure it's straight going in. So with our pilot bearing now on here, we can uh, get this guy bolted up. So I'm gonna throw on these uh, ARP studs onto our flywheel. We'll get the flywheel bolted up. After I get it bolted up, we'll grab Melanie and we will torque it down. Then we can get the clutch disc on here and the pressure plate and then start getting the transmission to uh, line back up with all this. That'll be the fun part. Just wait, just you wait. Woo! So pressure plate, uh, friction disc and the flywheel all bolted up to the engine now. Let me tell you, doing that by yourself sucks. But a couple things that I want to touch on, I guess. So if you guys are doing this, where's my hat? I want my hat. Ah, much better. So a couple things if you are doing this. A, when you go to bolt the flywheel back up, do it in a star hat turn. Hand tighten them all in, then go over them with a, like a normal ratcheting wrench, then go over them with a torque wrench. Have someone hold the crankshaft for you so that way you're not getting the flywheel just spinning on you as you're doing it. Second, utilize that clutch alignment tool to hold that friction disc into the the, the, the spinning bear, the spinny bearing, oh my God. The pilot bearing, Jesus, it's hot. I am like losing my mind right now. So use that clutch alignment tool to hold the friction disc into the pressure plate. Once it's in the pressure plate, not the pressure plate, the flywheel, Jesus. After the friction disc is held in by that clutch alignment tool, go ahead, bolt the pressure plate up. Now I do wanna say something, if you are going to be using the ARP bolts like I did, you're gonna need a special socket. So I had to go to Home Depot, grab one of these, it's a 5 8 12 point socket. You will not be able to use a six point, an eight point, whatever, how many points you have in a socket, unless it is 12 points. So get that 12 point, get it on there, and just, oh God, dude, it's hot. It's hot and I'm tired and I'm thirsty. So transmission is reassembled. We have the new clutch fork and throw out bearing on there and that new retainer cover. Rear main seal has been changed. Flywheel, pilot bearing, pressure plate, friction disc, all reinstalled on the car. It's time to get the transmission back on the car. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna slide that transmission right, right down there, slide it right under that there car, get that uh, transmission jack that I got like right back there, get that under the car, somehow get the transmission onto the transmission jack, get it bolted up or get it like, get it to go up and then I have no idea how I'm going to go ahead and slide it into the transmission. So it is going to be a slight battle to do so. So let's get this thing bolted up and uh, once the transmission's in, the rest will be cake. It's just getting the transmission back in. So let's get uh, the input shaft wiggled back into the, the pilot bearing area and get everything lined up properly. And then we can be on our way getting the drive line and exhaust all put back on the car so we can get this wrapped up.
I don't know how much of the, all that you guys just saw. It's dark outside now. It took Melanie, Melanie also huge shout out to Melanie. Like she came down in the garage. She was picking up the transmission with me, shaking the engine with me. She was killing it. She was doing awesome. Greatly appreciate you, Melanie. I love you. Um, secondly, four hours, four hours to get that transmission to go into the engine. And oh my God, was it awful. So if it is like one degree off, like if the engine is one degree off, if the transmission is half a degree off, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, it's not going in. Finally, I ended up taking apart the pressure plate, pulled the uh, friction disc off, realigned everything, and then after another solid, I don't know, hour and a half, finally got it to slid in, went around, tightened down all of the bolts that hold the transmission to the engine. I got the starter put back in because those are also two engine bolts, and uh, also got the rear carrier back up in there for the transmission. Oh my God, dude, I am I am so tired. I am so tired just trying to get that transmission back in the car. Woo -hoo. I don't even know if it's all gonna work. I don't even know if it's all gonna work. Matt, is the car even gonna work after all this? He's a broken! I honestly have no idea if this is gonna work or not. We kind of like really shoved the transmission in there. Uh, the transmission seems to be leaking a little bit of gear oil, so I'm gonna put some gasket maker on that to uh, fix that. But uh, I'm gonna get going on getting more of this stuff back in. The next thing I wanna get back in is the shifter assembly inside of the car and get the slave cylinder back on there. And then I wanna test the transmission to make sure it'll actually go into gear and that the clutch is actually engaging properly. So let me, uh, let me get the slave cylinder bolted back up. Let me get the shifter put back in the car and we'll make sure that everything is working hunky-dory because if it's not, then we got to take the transmission back out and I don't want to do that. All right, I have my lovely assistant Melanie in the car and she is going to go ahead and uh, push it. Yes, our clutch fork moves. Everything you said feels stiff in there. Perfect. So I think uh, I think we're good to go. I need to torque down the transmission to engine bolts. I need to put the drive line back in. Need to put the exhaust back on. Uh, need to get some of this engine bay stuff cleaned up a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to finish tonight. Um, I need to fill up the transmission with gear oil. I'm going to do that right now. But uh, so far, everything is chooching along. Going to keep going on this and see where we end up. It's like 11, like 1030-ish, I think. It's like 1030, so I don't know how long we'll keep going, but we'll get as far as we can. Okay, update. Oh God, I'm hatless again. Update, it is, what time is it? It is 11 o'clock. I've decided I'm gonna keep going. Crispy Red Bull. Almost done, except for the mess on the bench. Don't look at that. So the gear or the drive lines put back in. Still need to torque down the transmission to the engine. Need to put the exhaust on. Starter's back in, starter's hooked up, slave cylinder's on, everything's working. So gear oil's gonna go in. After the gear oil's in, going to put in the, or I'm gonna torque down the engine to transmission bolts. After those are torqued down, put the exhaust on. Interior's already put back together. Engine bay is already put back together with the exception of this one hose and the battery because I kind of lost uh, the battery hardware. Don't know where that went. Oops. So, uh, I got my Red Bull. I'm hungry though. I could use some food, but I'm gonna keep going. So, let's fill up the car with gear oil and uh, continue this lovely cycle. Okay, everything should be good to go at this point. The drive shaft is in, the exhaust is on, the battery's connected, everything in the engine bay is like put back together from what I can think of. Last thing to do is while the car's on jack stands, I'm going to make sure it can start. I'm gonna make sure it can start because if it can't, I mean, I don't even wanna think about that. So we have power, we have keys. Let's see if this thing will start. Not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous. If this thing is actually gonna work or not, Okay, so we are in the cockpit. Oh wow, those MTech shift springs feel real nice. We are in neutral. <laughs> Things are happening. All right, let's see if we can start it, I guess. 
Oh, that's not a good sign now, is it? Okay, well, hang on. Let me let me play with things a little bit. We're in a finite space. Dude, it disappeared. It dropped on the fucking ground. That's what I thought, but there's bolts right there. There's bolts over there. There's bolts up there. There's bolts in there. There's literally bolts up there. Will it start? We have power. That's good, right? Oh! Why won't my car only go into third? Ah! Why does it only go into third gear? Man, you fucked something up. I mean, oof. You really oofed it's something. Only, are the wheels spinning? No, they're not, are they? No. Why is it only going to third gear? That's a good question. <laughs> what is that sound, dude? Why is the car only going to third gear? Yo, what is going on with your car right now, man? So something somewhere went terribly wrong. Not sure where, Matt, do the thing. Well, what, what thing do you want me to do? Just show the thing how we made this an automatic. His feet are not on the clutch. Look, his feet are outside. Watch the wheel. Well, watch, watch, shifting. Look. He just put it in first gear, no clutch, wheel spinning. Oh, watch. Something clearly is not right. Yeah, I'm gonna have your, I'm gonna have this towed to your work. Can you do my, can you do my valve spring recall and at the same time fix my clutch? Can you just kind of fix it? I mean, I feel it. I feel it doing the actuation. I feel, yeah, I felt the clutch doing something, but it won't go into gear. Man, let me like peek up here at the at the dealio again. Dude, what is going on? I broke the BRZ. Oh, when I push in the clutch, you get angry. Really? Yeah, yeah watch. Clutch in. She gonna get all sorts of angry. Nothing's happening. Well, you know what? She ain't angry right now. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Nothing is happening! All right, it's like 1 a.m. Don't know what's going on with the car. Uh, Matt and I have been playing with it for a little bit. We think something in the system just isn't lined up fully proper or something, you know. I don't know. It goes to Subaru next week to get the valve tray or the valve recall done anyway, so the engine's gonna be pulled. So I'm gonna have Subaru take a look at it. I don't wanna fight with the transmission again to try to get that thing in or back off. So I'll have them play with it. We tried bleeding the clutch. We tried checking the actuation of the slave cylinder on the clutch fork and there's just nothing. No idea, no idea what's going on with it. So in the garage it shall sit and I will just have it towed down to Subaru. They're not too far away. Um, I think they'll, I think my appointment's like Monday or something like that to have the car checked out. So yay, yay, so much yay. But you know, I'm, I'm not gonna call this a total loss. Not calling it a total loss, Matt. Knowledge was gained. The learning experience. The learning experience. Learning. So I'm going to end it there. It's 1 a.m. Um, I have to edit this video in the morning. So the day I'm editing this is the day it goes live, which is the day you guys are seeing it. So if you guys have any uh, ideas of what the issue might be, feel free to drop it down below. Um, we checked the access panel. We can see the throw up bearing engaging and actually sliding on the new shaft. Not quite sure what's going on, but if you got any ideas, drop them down below. But I'm gonna end it there. So if you guys like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button and turn it blue like this vice on the bench because it's the only blue thing near me. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up one of these corners. No idea which one I'm doing, doing yet, doing tonight, doing, I don't know. You know what I, you know what I mean. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.